I mean, the more agents you build, the harder they are to manage. True. Let's cut. And then take three. Mark. <laughs> Hi, I'm Priya Ponapalli, SVP of Engineering. At Scale, we have been working with some of the most ambitious companies to bring AI to their most complex workflows. And through that work, we have learned something important. Building AI agent demos is easy, but building a suite of agents that are reliable and are securely connected across various environments, that is very challenging. And the more agents you deploy, the harder they are to manage. So we've gotten certain learnings through our work with enterprises, and we're very excited to now share that with the community. Today, we're going to open source the agentic infrastructure layer in the Scale Generative AI platform, Agentex. Agentex is a full-stack, enterprise-grade framework for building, deploying, and scaling reliable AI agents. Now, I'd like to introduce my team, who will give us a demo of Agentex share more details about it and why we decided to open source it. Hi everyone, I'm Felix Su, Director of Engineering at Scale. I'm Mihir Pandya, Director of Engineering. I'm Sam Denton, Director of Machine Learning. I'm Jason Yang, Staff Software Engineer. Before we get into the demo, I wanted to give a quick introduction as to why we built Agentix and who we're building it for. As we scaled up our business, we found it was very difficult for us to deliver all different kinds of AI to different customers um, without like a delivery framework that helped us deliver really quickly, but also with the flexibility that we wanted. Every single customer had different bespoke requirements, and it was really difficult for us to kind of deliver all these different things um, all the same way. And so Agentix is the framework that we wish we had from the very, very beginning, um, and we're happy to deliver it to the rest of you and show you how it works. Just to get us kicked off before I do the demo, I kind of wanted to show what the target of this um, experience is supposed to be. So, um, you know, we're working for uh, enterprises where they want to scale out their, their AI portfolio massively. And so if you look at this screen here, this is an example of that. For example, you might have security or IT or um, DevOps, all these different types of AI running in your company. You want all these AI to be running on the same track, um, basically compatible with each other. Um, and it's so that all of your AI is kind of consolidated into, into kind of one infrastructure. So this is an example of all of these. Uh, the one that we're going to go into is this customer support agent. So to do that, uh, you would first visit our open source repository. Uh, this is the one that's going to be available to you on the, on the time of launch. Um, and you can see here instructions in the readme on how to, how to do what I'm, I'm about to show you. So um, to get these set up, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Here I have this repository cloned uh, locally. Um, what I'm going to do here, very simply, is go to the UI package and just run that. Once that UI is running, you can see here um, running on port 3000. I can go to my uh, browser, type localhost 3000 here, and then you'll see the, the uh, UI pop up. In this case, for this demo, we're going to show the customer support agent. Um, so if I go to my uh, other project, um, this is a, a project that we're going to be uh, spinning up. Um, to show you how you would get started if you were to go on a blank, blank slate, though, um, let's go into this agent rep uh, repository and basically set that up. So here I'm just running this initialization command on our CLI. Uh, I'm going to go and set up one of these. Uh, this is in our documentation if you're curious on what these mean. But I'm going to set up a simple one, which is our sync um, agent. Um, I would like to create my project in this agent's directory, as you can see here on the left. And then I'll call it a name. In this example, I will just call it demo, because that's what we're doing right now. And I'll make the project folder name demo as well. Um, for demonstration purposes, this is just to fill out the description. Um, and then I'll use the UV for package management. Here is a, a, basically a, a list of different things that uh, give you some more information about what you would need to do after. But uh, I just want to show you what happened in the screen here. So first, I'm going to go to the demo uh, folder. You can see it's set up here on, on the left. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go into it on my screen. And all I have to do is run Agentix agents run um, and run this command. Okay, and once I see here, it's going to say application startup complete. I go here, refresh my screen, view all the agents, and you can see this new agent pop up. In this case, this agent does something very simple. It's just going to say hi back to me. Um, but we're going to want to see something more interesting. So all we have to do is go to this customer support agent. 
Um, this is an example with like a lot more uh, you know, meat to the bone. And we're going to ask it a question. Let's say, hi, I'm having trouble uh, with my delivery. It seems delayed. Oops, sorry, this is not the right thing running. I'm going to go back and click on this one. Uh, kill this repository and go back to the other agent. Here's my customer support agent, and I'm going to run the command in there. See how easy it is for us to switch between different agents? All I have to do is go to the other folder, kill the other agent that was running, um, and, and view this one. So now I can talk to this one freely. Hi, I'm having trouble with my MacBook delivery. It is delayed. So now the agent is thinking through its different steps. And you can see here, there's different data that, is, uh, that it's retrieving, uh, mock data from different customers, a set of prompts that I've preconditioned, and also a set of tools. It can look up customer information, it can check service issues, um, and it can generate retention offers. Right? Um, and so in this case, it's asking for the customer in question. So I'm going to go ahead and type my email. This is a fake email, sarah.johnson at email.com. And it's going to go through all these different steps. Now, if we look at what's happening behind the scenes here, um, it's looking at different tools. It's, it's you know, taking in different user messages. It's you know, being able to like, write different code here. Um, now, all of this stuff is pretty hard in practice to be able to do. Um, you know, you ha if you want all of your agents to follow the same consistent formatting, uh, you're going to spend a lot of your time, each individual one of these teams, building completely bespoke stuff. So this is a way for us to kind of unify that experience. Um, and in a second, we'll talk about how this is, this is very useful for enterprises. All right, for those of you who want to try things out yourself, please visit our repository at scale-agentix, and, and you can read through the readme to follow along. This was kind of just a simple example I wanted to kind of discuss with, with uh, those of us here. Uh, the real power, which is how we're going to deliver this to enterprises and what impact it's making uh, right now. Um, so Sam, I just wanted to ask you, uh, we've been through many iterations of trying to build something like this. What are those iterations, and how do you think that this is going to make a difference? I mean, I think agent building has just become really complicated really quickly, and I think that's great. It means we're building much more powerful things. Um, it means that the impact of all these things are, is much greater. I think some of the learnings that we've come from um, is originally being very opinionated about how we build to really make sure we're tracing agents correctly and making sure they all subscribe to a certain framework. And I think Agentix is a departure from that and allowing us more to be free in how we build, but being opinionated in how we deploy. Uh, and that transition has been really powerful for my team as builders of these agents, right? Because now we can use whatever cutting edge agent builder comes out, we can use whatever API changes come um, and just really reap the rewards of those things. And Agentix gives us this opportunity to have this opinionated deployment process such that we have two things that are really powerful. One is that we get to live in Python script land, right? We just build Python scripts. And Agentix just magically handles everything else, right? And if you ask any machine learning research engineer what they want to do, it's just Python scripts, right? Please don't make us do anything other than that. Uh, and Agentix just handling that for us has been really, really powerful. And I think the second thing that's really valuable is just the versioning that comes with the way in which Agentix is designed, right? I think you know we come from a place where we used to version models through ML flow, and we used to have all of these different ways to make sure that we knew which model went out when and which deployment went out when. Agents are just code, right? And so all of a sudden, we were building agents in such a way and didn't have really clear tracking and tracing. And now with Agentix, because of sort of the deployment mechanisms and the way in which it's just code, it's just a Docker file, um, now we can really easily you know, launch a thing and then say, oh, we need to go back to that other deployment, right? I think that's one of the things that uh, we're finding in the space of LLMs and lack of determinism, right, is you have an eval set, you deploy a thing, you think it's going to be way better based on your eval set and your customers like lighting your DMs on fire, right? And you're like, oh, okay, we're going back to the, to the last one. Yeah. Um, and Agentix makes it really, really easy, right? Uh, so I think, yeah, it really comes down to the fact that we're changing opinionation from how we build to how we deploy yeah. uh, and what that gives us in terms of the ease of deployment and also the ease of sort of versioning. And, and we tried a few things before, yeah. right? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, my team, we built like a no-code drag and drop. <laughs> You know, and then that. and then and then your team, we built like uh, this uh, YAML, like uh, domain-specific language to try to build. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about what happened when we tried to scale our business up? We had like uh, international, you know, customers and customers from all different sectors, and you know, the amount of people that had to ask you questions. Yeah. 
kind of grew out of control, right? What was the story of that and how did this evolve? Yeah, I think what we did is we really tried to tightly couple the platform and the opinionation around agent building, right? Our platform worked with a certain agent building framework. That agent building framework worked really well with our platform, right? And what that meant is that anyone who wanted to build with the platform had to come through our agent building framework, right? And that didn't scale really well when you have all of these customers. And then also when your clients want to build on your platform, right? As you said, right, it allows clients and other customers within scale, other business units within scale to use our platform and choose to build however they want, right? Um, I think my team as a solutions engineering team didn't really scale very well, right? Uh, in terms of trying to figure out how to explain how the agent building framework works and then work through all these bugs and features. Um, I think I'd rather just leverage what the open source community gives us. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe Jason, you can talk a little bit about. <laughs> well, I think maybe a key point there, right, is like this is why Agentix is different from like all of the other agent SDKs out there, right? There's a lot of popular ones out there, like the OpenAI Agents SDK. I know Anthropic just released one of their own, right? But Agentix is not trying to solve that problem in particular, right? Agentix is trying to solve the, the container around in which you build the brain using that fr the, those libraries and those frameworks. So Agentix is tangibly a way to host that code and have a unified API around that code, but it's not trying to take over any anything from that space. Yeah, I think I don't know if you remember, but when you were first working on Agentix, I went through like a few weeks with you, like really trying to get you to understand this is not agent building code, right? This is agent execution code, and I think that solves our problem so much more than the agent building yeah. code for us, at least. My goal was basically how can I not get into in Sam's way, right? How can I only solve Sam's blocking problems and not be a blocker? for Sam's team. And I think the, the answer really was just like, can we get rid of all the ops? Basically, there's like zero ops. Like, can we have an agent building team only focused on business logic and everything else, deployment, credentials, how do you do streaming? How do you communicate between different agents? How do they talk to one another? How do you do CICD? How do you do version control? All these questions eat up time that you could be spending doing the thing that matters, which is building a, a, you know effective AI. And so the thing is like, we are two different teams fundamentally, right? Yeah. We really wanted to like get rid of that portion. Um, all the other tools out there, like that, there are some tools that kind of attempt to solve this problem, but they were just like too tied to like vendors for us. You have like you know cloud vendors and other like people. They they have like other ties, right? You want they want you to use your cloud. They're very vertically integrated. And for us, it just like fundamentally doesn't work like that, right? If we use one cloud provider and another customer uses another cloud provider, now we're a blocker to that other customer, right? So. We really needed the most lightweight, most effective way to do this. I mean, here I want to throw it over to you because our, all of our customers, uh, kind of like as we worked for them for longer periods of time, you know, kind of our engagement has changed a little bit. Tell us a little bit about kind of like what you're seeing from our customers now and, and why this is helpful to them. It turns out that approach of like you know trying to get out of Sam's way is also how a lot of enterprises think about their knowledge workers, their power users, right? Like you may have a petroleum engineer who's thinking about how do I build an agent that's gonna uh, prevent me from b designing an oil well that's not going to blow up. Uh, they don't want to think about which Kubernetes pod do I host my agent in or which file system do I need to write my contacts to. They want all that stuff taken care of for them. And so like this approach of trying to meet uh, the customer where they are and building a framework uh, around that like end knowledge user is exactly what like our uh, customers are looking for. Yeah, and, and, and also like something that, that uh, we've touched on before is like some of these customers, as we work from, work with them longer, they kind of want to move to more of a hybrid model, right? They yeah. feel enabled by us coming in and helping them, and they also want to scale up their AI portfolios. Can you tell us a little bit about like kind of shifting to more of a hybrid model? What are customers asking from us now, now that they feel like they've gotten a little bit of a hang of how things work? Yeah, I mean, our customers are now sort of getting to the point where they want agents that understand their tribal knowledge, that speak their dialect, and they want a system that can actually help them do that. Uh, instead of having to move all of the bespoke data sources or tools to some very one specific provider, they want a hybrid model where they want to be open to other data sources, uh, tools, and have the flexibility of choosing the best tools to build an agent. And I think sort of meeting them where they are uh, with like an open framework allows them to do that because they don't have to worry about paying the price of a wrong decision 100 days from now. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a very expensive price if, uh, that many enterprises have, have already paid in this AI adoption game that we're seeing. Yeah, we've paid that, paid that <laughs> price as well. Um, and Jason, I want to throw it over to you. One last uh, question for you, which is that I've showed some simple things, 
but I haven't talked about the cool things that, <laughs> that Agentix kind of does. Um, in the readme, you'll see like a, an example of things moving from, we call them level one to level five agents. Level five agents being agents that run entirely on their own without too much human interaction, but uh, with the possibility of human escalations. Can you talk to um, the audience a little bit about our partnership with Temporal, how that's helped us kind of bring this vision to life and what advancements we want to make in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So I think maybe it's good to start with like what Temporal is, right? So Temporal is like a very strong abstraction layer over like building uh, long running asynchronous jobs. And it handles a lot of the state management for you. It handles a lot of like execution and parallelism for you. When we took a deep look into the primitives that Temporal supports, we noticed that like a lot of them are very perfect for the types of AI workflows that we want to build, especially like the long running asynchronous agents that where the agents are the ones driving things as opposed to people just typing in one thing and getting a response back. So I think in general, right now, Temporal is a highly scalable and, hi and highly widely used uh, framework to, to support a lot of things like banks and a lot of like complex approval chains where, where we expect agents to start taking a lot of rain going forward. Yeah. And uh, what types of applications do you think that that um, you know brings us? Like for example, we talked a little bit about this procurement agent, mm -hmm. where you can have agents kind of overseeing large operational things, which like have dynamic inputs and outputs. Like, why did the agent frameworks or things we used before, the tools we had, not stand up to those types of, mm -hmm. types of tests? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of those things, right? Like you can implement them, right? It's just pretty painful, right? Like, it, you know, typically, especially if you're trying to do it in a very scalable fashion, you have to set up your own message queues, you have to set up your own databases, uh, and you have to build all of that state management yourself. And Temporal is actually pretty aligned with Agentix on that front. It allows you to get right to the business logic and, and implement exactly what you're looking for. And then with a lot of integrations, you can, you can just call these things as tools and then just kick them all off within your agent code. Yeah. I was thinking in Python scripts still, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like this is to kind of like up level our, our MLEs and applied AI um, people. There are definitely like a lot of really, really cool experiences you can build if you look deeper into the technology. Um, the procurement agent thing that I was talking about with Jason is, uh, you know, the ability to say, let's say have, let's have an AI like oversee an entire operation, you know, procuring vendors, bringing them in. Um, you know, what if, what if a vendor is late how do you react to that using like agentic you know, behavior? Like an LM can interpret that pretty easily. Escalating that to a human, having a human say, just, just give an approval like, oh yes, let's change the vendor, moving forwards, right? These really, really dynamic long running things are pretty hard to build right now. If you can try to imagine right now with the technology you have on hand, how would you imagine a workflow like that? It's very, very difficult to do that. Um, so with Agentix and with the technology we have in the tutorials that we we're bringing to you with the open source, we encourage you to try and explore those new types of things. A very common analogy I say in a lot of uh, you know meetings that I have is like I think you know seeing something like ChatGPT basically broke the four minute mile for us, giving us like an an, an uh, idea of what's possible. We're hoping that this new long running agent style things will break the three minute mile, um, and we're encouraging people to explore and share with us kind of what they find. We built Agentex for our customers, so it's already ready for production and battle tested. But there's still a lot more to build. Things like SDKs, agent-to-agent -agent connections, and more advanced use cases. So please contribute and help shape what comes next. Visit scale.com to get started.